I'm in Malaysia for the first time. And uh, in my haste to get out of the airport, because I'm a pretty fast walker, I just like booked it through immigration and everything. It's pretty crazy, but I got through pretty quickly that I completely missed my mom and I walked past her because she was waiting for me at the luggage carousel. I just walked around here like 20 minutes trying to figure out where she is. And finally, because she's not the best at checking her phone, she finally, she finally answered asking me if I was through immigration yet. And now she is coming out. She shouldn't be too far. I think she was just waiting at the luggage carousel. So now she could be anywhere, because I don't think she has a data plan. She has to log on to the airport Wi-Fi every single time. But I gotta say, I'm proud of my mom for figuring out the Wi-Fi. Because <laughs> before she left, she just said, okay, I'm not gonna, have a, not gonna be able to text you or anything. So just find me. Is Mama. <laughs> See how long it takes her to notice me. Hey, Ma. Sorry, I, to I totally walked past you. <laughs> no, I mean, I was, I usually run out of the airport really quickly. And then once I realized that I walked past you, I'm like, oh, I can't get back in. I did. I texted you like 10 times. I didn't see anything. Oh. You probably, because you're on airport Wi-Fi, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you, you, it logs you out automatically. But you figured it out. Yeah, I've been out for like 30 minutes now. Oh, I was waiting. Yeah. Was for future waiting. reference, that's a bad place to wait. Huh? It's a bad place to wait because okay. if I get past you or if you get past me, you can't go backwards. And if you couldn't check your phone, then I'd just be waiting out here and I wouldn't be able to go back in and get you. Okay, uh, do you, uh, we need to exchange money. I need to exchange money. I have money. You have money? For okay. the time being. Okay, well, cab? Yeah. Right. Go to the hotel. Oh, I missed you, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you too. Okay. okay. Just got into the hotel and it's really nice. They, they upgraded us. Um, I got my mom her own room. It's a. Uh, I might be spoiling her and I'm realizing that this is going to turn into one of those spoil my mom weeks that I've never done. So I'm going to try my best to be a good son this week for the first time ever. In a lot, well, not maybe not ever, but in a long time where I'm just going to like do nice things for my mom and take her around and, you know, maybe take her to a spa or, or something. And, you know, we're going to go out for dinner very soon. Um, I mean, I'm gonna have to do something for my dad too, because otherwise it's not, it's not even. I gotta, I have to love them the same. I mean, I don't have to. I want to love them the same because I don't want to play favorites. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's it's really nice here. It's really nice. My goodness, I don't know what to do with myself. Uh, I got my mom her own room just because our sleep schedules are probably very different, and she has a cousin slash friend that um, don't live in the city so in case they wanted to crash they can you know there's enough space for them to crash um, man I do not think this place was going to be this nice there's art there's art actually I haven't even looked at the bathroom here yet oh, shower and tub <gasps> Can't get used to this luxury. Can't spoil myself. Oh, and then when we go to, well, then we're gonna go to Penang, and um, and I've decided because I've been hanging out with so many travelers uh, in Taiwan, um, the next trip I go to, I, I just have to kind of go off the grid. Um, well, not off the grid. Meaning, I'm not gonna bring my laptop which will be the first because I almost always, I, I always travel with my laptop. Um, but it's, you know, it's just such a, it's a worrying thing if you're, you're keeping it uh, in a hostel 
which is what where I need to stay. I want to I want to stay in a hostel on my next trip and just live like a like a backpacker with very with even fewer items with an even smaller bag than that. I need to do that, so I can't get used to this, but I can enjoy this week. Um, yeah, I'll uh, let you guys get to know my mom a little bit. <laughs> She'll probably hate it. She hates being filmed. But she also watches every single video, including this one. Hey, Mom. You're right across the hall from me now. I'm going to see you in four minutes. And I love you. Okay, I just had the breakfast at this hotel, and it is so, so good. Um, not really a continental breakfast, which is great. It's basically a mix of um, Indian food, Malay food, some Western food, uh, Chinese food. And, uh, and I guess over the last couple of days here, the one thing that I've noticed about Malaysia that I really, really enjoy is it's a very clear uh, distinction between three different types of people you have. Well, the, the, the Malay people, the Chinese people, and the Indian people. And, um, and when you're going to the markets and stuff and walking through the streets, you, you see everybody doing their own thing, speaking their own languages. There, there's so many languages spoken here. You go to the markets and everyone speaks like five different languages, uh, like Malay, Hindi, uh, Cantonese, Mandarin, English, um, and there's probably others. But it's, it's such a cool mixture. And when you go to like a, a city like London or New York, um, you have that multiculturalism. That's something I really love about London, New York specifically. Um, like Vancouver, LA, a lot of the big cities with multiculturalism, it's there, but they're in pockets. Everyone's in different like regions of the city and they kind of hang out with themselves, you know, speaking their own language sometimes. Um, though it's getting more, everyone just speaks English, but they hang out in their own areas. Like you have a, a Korea town, you'll have a Chinatown, you'll have you know, little Tokyo, they have all these areas where a lot of people from um, those countries stay in and open up shop and so it becomes that part of town. Uh, London and New York, it's all that mixture. Everyone's kind of connected, hanging out with each other. Um, but they're all British, whatever, right? That's the effect of colonialism. They, you know, a lot of them, you know, they st obviously they still have their culture, but you know, some of the people, and I used to be one of them in Canada, um, you know, you kind of shed off that heritage of yours and you're like, no, I'm, I'm very much Canadian, you know, or I'm very much England. And, you know, they they really feel that in, in the culture. I mean, of course, they're still Indian. They're always going to be, or Chinese or whatever. Um, but it, it feels like their culture is more British than, you know, their heritage. Here, it feels like everyone is their own, they speak their own language. There's, it doesn't seem like there's, I, I, I should check which is the official language, but everyone is just from their own place, but also from here and hanging out with everyone everywhere. And wow. yeah, I, I don't really feel that, yeah, the colonizing effect where you kind of have like this one culture kind of overtaking or imposing on everyone else's culture. I, I don't see that here. And I think this is the first place that I've been to in a very long time where it kind of feels like, oh, this is this is its own place, right? Like I was in Taiwan and you have the, the Japanese influence, you have the Chinese influence. Uh, Philippines, of course, you have uh, a Japanese influence as well as Spanish influence. Like you, you see these all over, um, but here, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, also, back to breakfast. It was such an amazing breakfast. I feel like I have to change up my regiment now. So my my regiment now will be to wake up at like 5.45, go down, and just hang out in the breakfast room with my laptop. I'm going to try to get some work done there. And I will just hover around the breakfast buffet because it's so cool. And it's like the nicest cafeteria. And they have all these different types of food. I need to do that. And then my mom can stop complaining that she's 
she got up for breakfast and I didn't. Even though I, we had like a 10 minute overlap just now, she was there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do some writing today and then maybe wander around the city. Hmm. I don't know, I'll figure it out. My mom went to walk one of her cousins to the bus stop and she's going back to Singapore. Singapore is a six hour bus ride from here. It's so close. Uh, yeah, so that being said, I'm gonna get into it. Today is workout day. Well, every day is a workout day. But today, specifically, is, um, I guess, a core day, which I haven't really done in a while. Uh, my mom met up with her, uh, like, high school classmate. They haven't seen each other in, like, 45 years or something. So I took this opportunity to go to the gym. And uh, I'm almost done. I just have one set to go. I thought I'd share with you and my thought process in case y'all need some motivation. So one thing that I've learned about myself is that I can't set my goals in the middle of my workout because I'll always set them way down the list or down the line, you know, just, uh, I'll make it really easy for myself because you get tired and you don't end up doing it. Um, so I set, myself with a hundred of those Avril things, uh, 200 knee to shoulders, 200 kick up to the ceilings on both sides for both of those, uh, just a hundred shoulder chest presses and some walking backwards. And at first I thought, hey, this, this is probably not too crazy, not too hard. Uh, but after my first after my first set, I was already gassed out. So if I had made my goals then, I probably would have uh, stopped. But I'm uh, pretty much at the end. I just have one set, 10, 20s to go. And, um, and then I was gonna do 10, uh, 10, what you call it? 10, 10, uh, 10 laps of the pool. That's what I was gonna do. Oh, so it definitely got progressively worse. Three, four. Oh, this is the hardest. Ten with the Okay. Ten. Ten with that one. Oh. Also signed up for an Airbnb experience. So tomorrow I'm going to um, the Vatu Caves. Vatu Caves, which is not too far from the city. Uh, and there's like a... There's a, whoa. there's, there's like waterfalls. So we go swimming in the waterfalls, a bunch of hiking, a bunch of, uh, yeah, a bunch of a lot of stuff. I asked my mom if she wanted to go, but I guess she's been to Malaysia and Kuala Lumpur enough and she doesn't really want to do too much of, Aside from shopping, this morning we spent some time in Chinatown and just bought a bunch of stuff for her to send back to uh, my dad, my brothers, and my aunts and uncles. She basically bought this case of like shrimp crackers and stuff. Okay. So I'm doing 20 of these on each side. This pretty much for the obliques. After like the second set, I was already trying to sleep in the middle of the workout. Trying to avoid the sensation of pain. Okay. Okay. 
I mean, it's in these moments that I remember why I don't like working out. It's so tiring. But since having a trainer and them basically telling me all the things to do, I mean, it's been a lot easier not to think about it and just doing what someone tells you to do. Oh. Hello. And my last set before the swim, which is there to allow me to cool off, and I'm also doing 10 laps in the pool. Okay. That was actually a lot faster than I thought it was going to take. Just over an hour, took a lot of breaks in between. Every day I remind myself, gotta look like an action hero to play an action hero. Again, I wanna use martial arts experience before age catches up with me and I can't anymore. So here's to, here's to staying in shape and looking like you can do action. It's actually not bad. Like, I noticed the changes. It's uh, pretty, pretty drastic. Oh, like even, even like three weeks ago when I started this, like I, I can already see the difference. So, uh, pretty happy with myself. Makes it a lot easier to keep going when you, I guess when you see the progression and you see the results. So, I'll keep it up. But until then, I'm relax by the pool, see if I can force myself to do 10 laps. I might just end up floating. I guess we'll find out. New development, I learned how to swim today. Uh, I used to always think it was the most tiring exercise. I mean, it still is, it's a full body workout. Uh, but I said I would do 10 laps, thinking that I would be gassed after the first one. Um, Turns out, and I don't know, I don't even know where my thought process went with this, but I was thinking about breathing and just focusing on breathing because, you know, it's always something that I try to remember to do is focus on breathing because most of the time we don't focus on breathing. We don't even think about it. We just do it. Um, but I was thinking about that as I was doing my first lap and then my second lap and the third last lap. And I realized, I'm like, man, if I'm just like breathing and doing this, you know, out of the water, I shouldn't be this tired. And that's when I started like really noticing the changes and how I'm like, oh, I'm just like taking a big gulp of air and then I'm blowing it out. Therefore my body, my muscles aren't actually getting any of the oxygen. And then I'm like, huh, maybe I should just slow it down, take my time. So I take, took a deep breath and then I just like kept it in and I swam. And then, I mean, it sounds like a really basic thing now that I'm saying it out loud, but like just breathing normally while you're swimming instead of just like, <gasps> like you don't actually get any of the oxygen. So I just tr tried to breathe like a normal human being underwater. And, uh, and it worked. <laughs>